So Brandy is the Associate Director of the Center for Benefits Access. Um, she is going to again do some overview of the online tools and then do a quick demonstration of those tools on the website. Again, questions will be um, uh, available for you at the end. So Brandy, do you want to take it over? Thank you, Shan. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad you could join me this morning for this demo of some of our tools. For those of you who may not be familiar with the National Council on Aging, we're a national nonprofit. We are headquartered in the Washington, D.C. metro area, and we have served as the MIPA Resource Center under ACL since 2009. And so as a result, we have a ton of free resources that are available to you as counselors, and we really encourage you to use those. Um, at the end of this presentation, I'm also going to give you some, some more links to some of our other non-sort of online things, some print products, and tell you how to get onto the MIPA listserv if you're not already on there. So um, definitely you want to hang in there. Um, but first, let me talk a little bit about um, probably the tool that we would imagine you would find most useful in doing your benefits screening work, and that is benefits checkup. Benefits Checkup was designed by NCOA and launched in 2001. And um, since then, it's just grown and grown and grown. We have over 2,500 pro benefits programs from the federal government, state, county level, as well as from sort of private kind of foundations, uh, drug manufacturers, all of those are in there. Uh, the site is really geared to help people who are older adults, which we kind of define as roughly 55 and older, um, or uh, adults of any age with a disability, uh, to find programs that can help them pay for a wide variety of their basic necessities. Um, and, and when I say that, it's just that uh, certain programs, like for example, WIC, for you know women, infants, and children program, are not going to be included in the database because it's really geared toward a very specific population. Um, you know, why would you want to use benefits checkup? Well, it's really a, a way to identify the full spectrum of money-saving benefits for your client. Um, I'm going to go through the demonstration, but at the very end, you can get a personalized report based on their income, their situation that you can save and print and give to them. You can download application forms, link to the different websites of the administering programs. Um, you can also use the resource library to quickly identify different types of programs in your area by category. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we partner with Social Security so that you can do the extra help LIS applications directly through Benefits Checkup. Um, we've got a data transfer with Social Security to do that. And most importantly is that we do all of the work for you. Um, we have a team of people here at NCOA whose job it is to constantly research, uh, update all of the background income and asset eligibility criteria for all of these thousands of programs. So every time the poverty figures get updated, they're in the program and updating all of those numbers. And so you don't have to do any of that math. You just have to enter in what you know about an individual's income and assets. And, and we do all the work for you in terms of helping you determine whether that person may be eligible for programs. So some of the types of programs that are included in Benefits Checkup, we have all a, a huge range of healthcare programs, the many different types of Medicaid, everything from like spend down to ABD, aged, um, you know, disabled, uh, the Medicare savings programs. The, we also have some programs for donated vision and dental services, which many of you know uh, Medicare does not cover those. Uh, as far as prescription assistance, of course, we have extra help, but we also have a wide range of the state pharmaceutical assistance programs, which I don't believe Iowa has one of those, but um, uh, as well as patient assistance programs that are offered by the drug manufacturers uh, to, to, to give people discount on brand name drugs. We have lots of food programs, SNAP, the Commodity Supplemental Food Program, home delivered and congregate meals. Um, as far as housing is concerned, in addition to the, the housing kind of voucher programs through HUD, we also have lots of programs related to people making home modification, weatherization assistance, paying for their heating and cooling costs, as well as a wide range of property tax discounts that are out there. 
For caregivers, we identify we can identify programs related to kind of respite and adult daycare and, and Alzheimer's support services. There are income programs such as SSI and, and state kind of general assistance, cash assistance programs, as well as a wide range of veterans benefits, transportation benefits. Um, the list goes on and on, but that just gives you a, an overview of how kind of comprehensive the database is. So I'm going to do a demo here, but before I start, I want to kind of just break it down into a, a couple ways that we sort of use the tool. Uh, we have what's called a quick screening at the very, very front page of benefits checkup. And this is where we ask somebody to enter their zip code, answer seven very quick questions, and it just generates a preliminary list of the programs that might be available to them. Now, obviously, we haven't asked for detailed income information, so they're not necessarily going to be eligible. And in that case, we really encourage people to go on and do the full screening, which is a much more comprehensive set of questions um, related to income, household, uh, uh, the drugs taken, if the individual is looking for prescription assistance. Um, and then it produces this really personalized report with all of this robust information regarding applications, where to go for support in their local area. Uh, we also have a just a very quick search re resource library where you can look, you know, if you're like, I want to know what kind of, um, you know, food benefits are available in, in my state. Uh, you can find that very quickly in the resource library. Um, and as I said, NCOA has this really great uh, data bridge with Social Security, um, which started back when Part D was sort of launched and, and we, you know, recognized the need to get people into the extra help program. So people can go ahead and screen for extra help, um, apply online, it gets immediately sent over to Social Security, and, and then, of course, they'll make the determination. Um, and before I uh, go on to do the demo, I did, do want to say that everything that's entered into and the benefits checkup is confidential. We don't ask for any personalized identifying information. Um, the extra help application is actually kind of a separate bridge um, so that we don't get that information. We only know how many people used it. We don't have any sort of personal details about who, who did that. Um, so you can rest assured that, you know, nothing is saved. Um, we, we have sort of in the background uh, amalgamated data where we just kind of get a sense of like, you know, 15,000 people in this area, you know, screen for this, but we don't have any further details about that. Um, so with that, let me sort of toggle over. I want to um, go to Benefits Checkup, which is at benefitscheckup.org. Um, so this is what the homepage looks like if you go to uh, Benefits Checkup. Uh, you'll see here, um, this this tab here, Find My Benefits, this is how you start the quick screening. Now you can you can scroll down and, and it'll it just kind of give a little more information about the types of programs and um, you know a little bit about uh, the tool and NCOA. But to get started, we really encourage people to just go ahead and use the, the quick screen. So I'm going to go ahead and put in an Iowa zip code. And so you'll see it, it tells me, yep, here, here's this individual. They're in Cedar Falls. Um, they ask who you're completing it for. Um, I'm, we use test case when we're doing a, just a demo because um, we don't want the data to go into the as to pretend that it's real. Um, it'll ask about birth date. This is really just to sort of see whether the person is potentially eligible for Medicare. Um, and then here it says, you know, just roughly what's your combined monthly gross income, uh, marital status, uh, veteran status, and then it'll say, what do you want to learn about? Um, and I, you can select all or you can select certain categories of programs. And here is the quick screen initial results. And it says, you know, there's 42 programs that match what you've told us so far. Um, but of course, we don't necessarily know any details about this individual's assets or um, other things that might uh, limit their eligibility. Um, this is kind of what we, we sort of, the quick screening is really sort of like a, a little mini marketing tool to get people to go further and to, you know, dig down deeper. So you can see, um, you know, it says 
okay, here's the, um, you know, ex extra help program. Here's uh, some forms of Medicaid and med that you might be eligible for. Um, so, but in order to, if you were to click on one of these, um, it would take you over to the full questionnaire, which we'll go ahead and just sort of uh, start completing. But the full questionnaire, as you can see, it asks for a few, little bit more basic information. Uh, it asks for some questions on health status. Uh, it'll ask about the household composition, uh, finances, and then finally we'll produce the results. Now, um, we always recommend that if you're working with a client that you can gather as much information as possible before you, you know, fill this out. Uh, any in information on their income and their assets, um, general sort of expenses, like what they're paying on rent or mortgage, um, it lasts for utilities, uh, any list of prescription drugs taken. Um, you don't have to have all of that information, but obviously the more you have, the more accurate your results are going to be in terms of helping to decide whether the individual is eligible for some of these programs. Um, so let me just walk through this so you get a sense of what um, it asks. So um, I'm going to say this individual is a male, um, is a citizen. It asks whether you're currently receiving um, benefits or participating in any of these programs. I'm going to say this person has Medicare in Part D. Um, if if you uh, click on any of the like highlighted text, it will come up with some information about what that is in case the individual is not sure. Um, and and these these questions here are just sort of optional. It's um, more about how did you learn about it, um, race and ethnicity. Again, optional. That's really for more our purposes of seeing where we can help sort of market the tool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Uh, here's the health questions. Um, it will ask about, uh, you know, veteran, if you are uh, a, a military retiree, um, if you have any chronic conditions. They don't ask you to name what the conditions are, just to, to indicate that you have one. Um, if you're taking any medications, this is where it helps to look for these patient assistance programs that are offered by the different drug companies. So um, I'm going to see uh, if you start typing, I'm going to pretend this individual has diabetes and I'm going to add that uh, to the list. Um, It'll ask about sort of if you've had an eye exam, um, do you have a disability? Are you legally blind? Um, are you dependent on others for care? Um, and then it goes on to say, say, you know, indicate anything you may be interested in. So I'm just gonna sort of, um, I'm gonna ch check just a few random programs here. Um, uh, transportation. You can click them all or, or click none of them. Um, then we asked this question about uh, children because we recognize that there are a lot of grandparents raising grandchildren. And so if the person indicates that they have they know of children who may not have health insurance, there will also be some information about the CHIP program in the tool. So going on, it asks um, some information about how household. Um, what type of housing does the person live in? Um, I'm going to say they own their home. How many people live in the household? Um, and you always want to include, uh, uh, even if, if it's just a one-person household, you know, put that in every sort of line. Um, do you play, pay property taxes? Do you pay your own gas or electric bill? Um, uh, this this uh, question here about whether you're, it's your principal residence helps to um, determine whether the individual might be eligible for some property tax sort of rebates. So I'm going to go ahead and say this this test case does. Um, now it asks about finances. Um, how much do you spend um, on on these types of things each month? I'm going to pretend this person still has. A little bit of a mortgage um, is spending. Uh, just just plugging some numbers in here. I'm not sure what expenses are like in Iowa. Um, probably a little cheaper than in DC, but uh, <laughs> uh, 
Um, and then it asks also, like, how much money do you spend for medical expenses not covered by health insurance? And I'm going to pretend like this individual has a fair amount of expenses. Um, now it asks about the different types of income. Um, let's, I'm going to say this individual has some, just some social security and um, you can ask, it, it, you know, if the person has a pension or, or different sort of dividends from like a 401k, you can enter that in, as well as any work income, other sorts of assistance that might go into the eligibility criteria. Um, then below it asks about different assets. Um, I'm going to say this, this person has a car that's worth maybe a couple thousand dollars. Um, they have a home that they're still paying off. Um, um, and that, I'll just leave it at that. So now you can see it sort of whittled it down. Um, from those 42 initial benefits programs, it's determined that this individual is likely eligible for 28. And again, it categorizes them by different types of programs. So you can see, if I look at this, I can see, oh, LIHEAP is one of them. If you click on any of the programs, it will provide um, a basic fact sheet about, you know, how do you apply, um, what will you need if you're going to apply, and if you click on these, it'll explain, you know, what is a proof of income, you know, you how do you prove your current utility bill, um, who should you contact. Um, if you want some, some further assistance or, or to go ahead and apply, you can contact this office, uh, which handles the LIHEAP application. Um, in this case, you can also, uh, it links to the program website. If I go back, however, some of these programs will likely have the application uh, right uh, like here, uh, this one, you can actually download the application form in English if you want to go ahead and, and sort of print that off. And, and it, it's, it explains that this is a, indeed a fillable form. Um, at, the, at the end of your screening too, you have, you know, let's say you ha you're working with somebody and there's 28 programs and maybe they're only interested in actually looking at four or five of them. What you can do is you can um, select which programs you're interested in. So let's say this, this individual is really interested in just the kind of, um, a few of these services um, in terms of utilities and, and some of their uh, other items. It will then produce a PDF that you can download and print and save as well for the individual, but it'll only contain the information of those programs. So it has, you know, these, these four or five programs that I've selected, um, how, all this information that was in the fact sheet about how to apply, um, uh, who do you contact, um, and that's, you know, that's what you can take sort of and give to your client um, or print out their, the application forms for them to give to them if you're, you know, sending them off with that information. So that's a, a demo of the kind of basic comprehensive screening and benefits checkup. But as I mentioned before, there's some other tools on the site that you may find useful. Uh, if you go uh, to the resources tab at the top of the page, uh, this is our resource library, which is really just very bare bones information about certain types of programs. So for example, if I'm in Iowa, and I just want to see like what sort of transportation programs are available. Um, you can see there's not there's not a lot available in Iowa, but you know it does list this one uh, assisted transportation and um, how to find out more information and, and see if you're eligible. Um, let me go back to resource library here. Um, if you scroll down here in the resource library, this is where you find the direct link to the Social Security Extra Help application. If you want to go ahead, it, it does provide the latest uh, data in terms of the income and eligibility thresholds. Um, and then you would go over and then this is, if you click on the apply now, it goes over into the secure data bridge uh, to social security. 
And then one final uh, resource that we have that's just, we, we made it easy for people is our Snap Map, which again, it's in the resource library page. Scroll down. Uh, this is a very quick way to get your state's SNAP application. So it'll tell you a little bit about it, and then you can download the application form or apply online if that's available. Find stores where you can use that. So this is just a very general overview of benefits checkup and the ways that you can use it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of other online tools that you may be interested in using from NCOA. And then I will have plenty of time to, sort of for questions. So let me um, just go back to, um, if I had sent the PowerPoint presentation to Shan and, and I've got in the PowerPoint kind of a demo of um, all of these things that I've just walked through. So you don't have to worry about what, where did she go and where did she click on for that? Um, it's all in the PowerPoint. So another tool that NCOA developed um, a few years ago and, and that sort of complements benefits checkup is a tool that we call economic checkup. And it was really created with this idea that there are a lot of older adults out there that um, either qualify for benefits but also could use some other money management assistance or may have income and assets slightly higher than the eligibility thresholds for benefits and still could use some some monetary sort of uh, resources and, and assistance. And so we created this tool to really drill down other types of budgeting, um, debt, that sort of assistance that's out there in terms of uh, helping people out financially. Um, so it is intended to supplement benefits checkup with some additional resources. We've got calculators as far as like paying down debt, um, creating a budget, um, saving, saving for retirement. Uh, there's a lot of links to legal assistance for individuals who may be needing legal assistance or thinking about bankruptcy or other issues. Uh, some information on scams and how to avoid those as well as a skills assessment and job finder, which I'll ex explain a little bit for later. Um, again, this is a, a tool that you can use beyond any sort of your assistance um, helping people apply for benefits for anybody you think may be struggling with some financial issues. Um, and I should note that right now, Economic Checkup is its own sort of website. Uh, we have a goal that integrate the two, uh, economic checkup and in benefits checkup, um, you know, that's going to be in the works in the next few years. But for right now, uh, you'll need to go to economiccheckup.org. Um, so a few little features about economic checkup. Uh, like benefits checkup, uh, it has a quick check tool. And the quick check tool in economic checkup is super quick. All you do is enter your zip code and then the categories of programs that you're interested in getting resources on. Uh, and it'll generate a, a report that you can print out. We also have a full checkup kind of, um, which is not nearly as long as the benefits checkup. Um, it's 23 questions and it'll, it'll look at how an individual's current financial situation stacks up against the elder index, which some of you may not be familiar with. Um, the elder index is a tool that was developed through the University of Massachusetts Gerontology Institute and Wider Opportunities for Women. Um, it's now maintained by UMass and NCOA. And what it is is a measure county by county across the United States of what it takes to get by as an older adult in this country. So you can go into the Elder Index and you can find out information about like, if I live in such and such a county, um, as a single renter, I would need a very basic income of X amount of dollars just to meet my basic needs. And so in the economic checkup tool, we use that as the sort of benchmark to say, um, you know, here's how you stack up against just meeting your basic needs. You're falling short or you're just above. And therefore, here's also some programs you want to look into. We do do a little bit of a shadow screening for some of the benefits and benefits checkup to encourage people to look into those as well. Also in economic checkup, uh, like in benefits checkup, there's a resource sort of tab where you can find programs quickly by different topics. And then we have this uh, job 
job search tool, which is um, kind of three three pronged. Uh, the first part of it is people can go online and look at what skills they have and um, you know what might be a good fit if they're looking for kind of part time work and retirement or you know you know not not ready to retire. They can also get some access to free online training. Uh, this is especially useful for people who may not have uh, you know, some computer skills, internet skills. And then finally, we have a, a, a job search tool that's powered by retirementjobs.com, which is really vetted for companies that are looking to hire older adults that are age-friendly jobs. So let me, again, toggle back to, um, this is what economic checkup looks like if you go to economiccheckup.org and you can see you can go straight to sort of the little job portal here or money saving tips but if you click on the the big orange button here this is the quick screen and you will see it comes up with um, what's your zip code so let me go ahead and put in another zip code and what do you want to learn about so I'm gonna say I want to learn about um, money management, uh, credit and debt, maybe some legal issues. And it's a little slow, but <laughs> here we go. Okay, so you can see it, it just generated some very quick resources that um, you know are available. A little budget calculator, a spending calculator, um, some information about the supplemental security income. Of course, we don't know if this individual qualifies for this, but it's just kind of presenting a lot of um, some of the core benefits programs that might be available. Um, if you, you can use this menu here to jump to the different sections, um, how to get your annual credit report, if you're looking at sort of debt consolidation, debt management services, um, again, consumer protections. Uh, you can look at some legal services and assistance programs. Um, here's a fact sheet about it. How do you get help? Um, it's at your AAA, which is great. Um, and what, what you need to have available. Um, and again, just like in benefits checkup, a lot of this information can be, um, you can print this in a report. Um, you can also go ahead and do the My Checkup, which is the more comprehensive sort of screening tool that I mentioned before. And this, as I said, it will um, ask about 23 questions. Um, again, let me just grab some information here. Uh, it looks sort of generally at income, so, you know, I get by, uh, I get some income from, let's say, Social Security Disability, um, it again, asks about assets, again, you don't, the more you answer, the more sort of accurate it can sort of screen for certain programs, but you don't have to answer everything. Um, uh, I'm, I'm interested in like jobs and learning technology. I have um, a lot of expenses. I'm thinking about filing for bankruptcy. Uh, I rent my home. Um, interested in sort of finding out about moving. Uh, you'll see a lot of the a lot of similar questions that were on the benefits checkup screening tool. So I'm just going to actually um, skip through a few of these and kind of go straight to the report. Oop. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, clearly, I can't sk skip through everything. Okay. Then it's usually not this slow in real life. It's usually when I'm demonstrating it on a webinar that it's it's going to take its sweet time, but um, <laughs> hopefully it will be uh, here shortly. Well. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna, as, I, as I'm waiting for that to process, um, I'm going to go ahead and open a new tab here and you can see some sort of other items here. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, res resources, um, you can just kind of scroll through the different topics, click on them, get information um, and, and point people to that. Let me just see if it's, uh, it's still taking its sweet time. Um, the job, job employment resources tool that I mentioned, um, again, uh, defining your skills, it can let you know that, you know, whether there's, uh, for example, if you're interested in, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, what's that going to be like, um, uh, helping match your interests. Uh, the get training is for free online courses to help you know build your job skills and then of course the find a job as i mentioned which is powered by retirement jobs um, allows people to sort of look for different opportunities including volunteer opportunities that are available in their area and i was going to see well, of course you know everything goes right up until this uh <laughs> time but um just at the economic checkup the my checkup results page is very similar to the benefits checkup results page i mean it provides a list of you know detailed information you can you can print it out um uh you can pretty much play with it on your own and, and sort of realize what that's all about um i'm gonna just go back to uh let me walk through uh, yeah, so this is what it would look like if uh, we generated that report. It would provide sort of information about how the per person stacks up to, you know, the elder index and meeting their basic needs, it has all these different sections and recommendations um, for how do they improve their economic outlook and, of course, has a printable report. Okay, um, now I want to talk about the kind of third tool that we have that's available. Um, and you'll probably not use this as much um, just because by nature of many of you who are ship counselors, um, you probably already know this information, but we created this con consumer tool, My Medicare Matters, to help people really understand the different parts of Medicare, to educate them and to research their options. So there's a lot of information about enrollment, how do you enroll, when do you enroll, what are the different periods that you can get a special enrollment, um, the different costs in the different parts of Medicare, what to look at in terms of coverage when they're making decisions. Um, but we also have this decision support tool questionnaire, and this is what I want to kind of share with you because I think that it's, especially if you're a new counselor and you're helping people to make decisions with Medicare, it may be a good way to supplement your knowledge. Um, and the decision support tool asks questions about like current health coverage and um, medications and creditable coverage uh, and really points to sort of the different options that are available, both when the individual first enrolls in Medicare and then of course during open enrollment. It also shadow screens for extra help and the Medicare savings programs um, based on the one or two questions about income. Uh, it does not contain drug or health plan information. Um, it, what this is is really just a kind of helping people figure out where to go next. So users generally get directed to their ship, to 1-800-MEDICARE, to the plan finder, or to Aon Retiree Exchange, which is what um, NCOA has a, an agreement with um, kind of to, to help send people over there. Um, there's no there's no obligation to go to any one of those, um, but just sort of information out there. Um, I do want to walk through this because what I find useful as somebody who gets um, questions from consumers about Medicare. At the, we often get questions at NCOA. Um, you know, I, I can answer a lot of the sort of general ones, but then you get those scenarios where somebody's retiring from the, you know, the state, they work for the state, and then they have a health savings account. And those kind of scenarios where I think are, it's useful to have something that you can check um, what you're thinking and, and your advice to them. So this is the general My Medicare Matters, what it looks like. You know, you can you can see there's all sorts of 
information about coverage and understanding enrollment. What do you expect? But I'm going to go straight over to the Medicare Quick Check tool. Um, so as you see, it just says, you know, this is what this tool is for about finding out about Medicare. But I'm going to pretend like um, I'm a person who, or I'm working with a person who is not enrolled in Medicare and uh, maybe has one of these sort of sticky situations where they're, it, I, I need some assistance to figure out how, what to advise them. So let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. Okay. So let's let's assume this person is going to be aging into Medicare um, early next year. So they were born in 53. Um, I'm going to, again, this is a test case. Um, and I don't have Medicare yet, this person. I, um, I do have health insurance, however, and I am, I am, uh, let's say, I, uh, my spouse still works. I'm, I, I'm retired, but my spouse is still working. And um, my spouse is working for a company with fewer than 20 employees. Um, I'm not sure whether I, I have prescription drug coverage, but I don't really know anything about creditable coverage. So I'm going to say I don't know. Um, I don't have any of these other sort of retire me benefits. Um, uh, but I do have a health savings account. So let's assume that. And I'm generally satisfied with medical care, but you know, I'm, I'm aging into Medicare, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, and I need all the help I can get. So, and then of course it asks um, if people are currently participating in, in benefits. This is mostly because if an individual is receiving, for example, SSI, then we know they have low income and they're gonna likely be eligible for the Medicare savings programs or extra help. But I'm just gonna say this person does not. Um, and I don't have any of these special circumstances in terms of, um, diseases or living situation. Um, me and my spouse, uh, this is our income. Um, and when you're retired, what similar income, I'll just put that. Okay. So we'll generate a personal report and at the top it will summarize what I provided for information. So, you know, I live in Iowa, I expect to enroll in Medicare, I've still got this spousal em employer coverage. Um, and then it does provide just very basic information for, you know, what the different parts of Medicare are, um, you know, and, and when the individual can enroll. Um, the nice thing about this tool is it provides a very visual uh, look at kind of here's your initial enrollment period for Medicare, um, when's the best time to enroll. Uh, they can even sign up to get a reminder about like you're in your initial enrollment period. Um, here's your Medigap open enrollment period um, and then here's Medicare open enrollment that happens every year and what you can do. Um, but then you go down and it provides a lot of information about personal next steps. So. Uh, here we've indicated that the individual has a health savings account, so um, their enrollment um, is going to uh, end their ability to contribute to that HSA, and they might face a penalty. If so, they need to learn more about that. Um, again, their their spouse is working for a small business, um, so it'll it automatically become secondary when they turn 65. So again, you really need to enroll when you're in your initial enrollment period. Um, just, just a lot of these different um, advice points, which I think uh, if you're sort of starting off in counseling or you're a little rusty, it's it's a great way to sort of um, uh, sort of supplement your knowledge and to you know if you're if you come across one of these situations, it's like ah what you know what do I do again with somebody with an HSA? Just a good way for you to uh, sort of remember what kind of advice to give, and and you see obviously it's. Um, you know, sending it back to Iowa SHIP uh, for, for more information. Uh, so let me um, go. So that was the quick check tool. Um, uh, these were just sort of three of the online resources. I want to leave some time uh, for questions, but um, 
Again, NCOA, in addition to those three online tools, we have a lot of other resources that are all free. You can print them off, you can share them, you can put your logo on them. Um, that's what we're here for. We have all of the Medicare cost charts. We do a little illustration each year about the donut hole and how people, you know, when do you fall into the donut hole if you're paying for your drug coverage some counselor checklists and toolkits. Um, you can find all of those in our resource library. Uh, we also do a roughly monthly webinar series that's open to anybody. Um, and usually on our, our, the Center for Benefits webpage is announced, as well as we have promising outreach strategies for those of you who are, you know, starting up your MIPA work um, and want to know, hey, I'm interested in doing some sort of like birthday card strategy. How have somebody done that before? We've got a, a clearinghouse of, of what people have tried in order to help people enroll in the extra help and Medicare savings programs. Um, I did want to mention the um, listserv and technical assistance calls. So we have a listserv which is open to anybody who is working on MIPA. Um, we don't restrict it to just, you know, the state director. So if you are interested in being on that listserv, please feel free to send me your name and, and your email address and I can put that, um, I can add you to that listserv. I can actually go to, let me, I can, let's see, list. Um, once you're on the listserv, you'll, you'll have access to all of the different information. So um, you can see we, we usually post information about like the different CMS trainings, our webinars. Um, people can ask questions. Um, uh, you know, like here's, you know, somebody is asking about like, how do you do X? Um, uh, you can ask that of your peers. So it's open to you. If you're working on it, please feel free to send me an email and, and let me know and I'd be happy to add you to that listserv. Uh, we also do technical assistance calls. Um, every it's usually every quarter and again this is open to anybody who's working on MIPA um, it's it's sort of not restricted we usually have some you know we might have some buddy from ACL or CMS talking about something we try to get your peers to share promising practices or we raise issues if we're noticing something as strange as happening in in states around a particular issue we'll raise that it's another just opportunity to connect with other people who are working on MIPA. Um, and we don't have one uh, this quarter because we do not do one during open enrollment. Um, but our next one will be the first, I believe it's the first or second Thursday in February. I, I would need to get back on that, but um, it's it would be announced on our listserv. So if you're on our listserv and, and you're getting our information, you would learn about it there. Um, so with that, uh, Shan, it looks like we've got um, a few minutes to answer questions. Do we have any questions in the chat? Yeah, we have. Um, yeah, we do have one question. The question okay. is, is there a cheat sheet that we can give to people to fill out so we have all of the information prior to entering? Um, and that was in reference particularly to the benefits checkup, if there was a quick tool or something that folks could fill out so that when they get to the screen, they're ready to go. You know, I... I think that we actually do have one. Um, I would need to go back, but I'm pretty sure that we have um, created a, a benefits checkup sort of cheat sheet where we we tell people what they need to have in order to do a very complete screening. Um, so let me um, let me look for that, and I can send that to you, Shan, and you can circulate that when you set, circulate the slides. That, that'll be great. And then um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone. So if there are questions and folks want to chime in, um, I do have a couple questions myself, but I'll give other folks a chance to, to chime in. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone. Um, so let me try to get my mouse there. Okay, so everyone's unmuted. Um, if you have a question, go ahead and feel free to, to pipe up, or if you want to type something in the chat box, um, I'll follow that as well. Okay, um, I have a question here from Sherry. She said, did the slides get sent out to the AAAs? Sherry, I'll do that immediately after this webinar. <laughs> Any other questions that folks have? Okay, you're all um, unmuted, so feel free to, to chime in. 
Um, I'll, ha I'll ask my questions in and then while folks uh, maybe are thinking about those. Um, I noticed on the benefits checkup screen there is a reference to a chat specialist. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, Brandy? Yes, yes. This is actually a brand new feature that we've just sort of added. We have a, a somebody in-house who is available to kind of help. It's mostly with sort of navigating benefits checkup rather than like super, super specific, you know, questions. Um, but uh, when uh, when he's a, it's, he doesn't have necessarily set hours, but you know, usually during the workday um, for about four or five hours, he'll be online, and so you'll see the little box at the bottom um, when he's online. And if you're you know working with a client and you just have a question about something or how should I enter, you know, when it asks me about how many people in the household, how should I enter this, he's there to help answer that question. Okay, perfect. Anybody else have a question? Okay, so my I do have a, one, another question Randy, on there. When you're selecting, who are you completing this for? And uh -huh. you were selecting the, the test case um, yes. option. Is that your recommendation if folks want to go in and just sort of play around and, and learn how to use the tool in different scenarios that you yes. suggest you use that option? Yeah, the test case is basically um, we use internally for testing things so that it doesn't get counted as an actual screening. Um, so if you want to go and play and just like try different scenarios out, just select test case because that means that we won't it, we won't read it as a screening and won't compile that as part of the data. Okay, and then with that, if they are, I didn't get a chance to view all of the options in there. If they uh -huh. are working with someone else as a you know as a professional. What yep. option is there that they should select? Um, in that case, you would, um, it will actually have, um, who are this, here's, who are you completing this for? Um, you can see that it's client. Oh, client. Um, okay. Or of course, if you're doing it for a family member or a friend, but client would be the, what you would use for uh, as a counselor. Okay, okay um, any other, any, does anybody have any other questions out there? I don't see anything coming up in the chat. I'm do a quick look. Well, hopefully um, folks took a lot of notes. I was um, taking uh, many notes, so I appreciate the information was, was terrific. Um, hopefully um, folks, you know, if they've been using it, they've seen some things that are familiar. If they had, you know, maybe they saw some new things, which is always good when you're coming to a webinar that you want to walk away with a couple of new things. So I hope folks learned, uh, learned a couple of new tools that they can take advantage of in working with, with clients as they come to the, to the AAA. Um, I do want to just, again, thank you, uh, Brandy, for mentioning the MIPA listserv. Um, I occasionally forward those out if I think, think people are interested in a particular topic or maybe has sort of a, a broad interest level that that everyone at the AAA might be interested in. But I do encourage everyone to go ahead and, and sign up to that listserv. It's not, you know, it's not something you're going to get hundreds of, of emails every day. Um, the information is pretty relevant, so I, I really like it. And then also those uh, quarterly TA calls. Um, again, any, like Randy said, anybody can join those. Um, they've been very helpful. Most of the information is geared for folks who are actually doing the work. Um, going out, doing that outreach and providing assistance, trying to, you know, organize those enrollment events and things like that. So um, I find it useful information, but I think um, you all who are doing the MIPA work would probably find it even more useful since um, you are responsible for organizing those outreach events. So um, a couple of good resources also in addition to those listed up there. So. Yeah, and again, okay, any, anybody, anybody have any questions? I was going to just reiterate, anybody can email me with, uh, in order to get information about those two and get, to get on the listserv. Okay, so Sherry just asked, how do you sign up for the listserv? And, and um, so yeah, you can send your, yep. send your email to, to Brandy, she'll get you signed up there. Yep. Okay, well, um, I guess hearing, hearing no questions, um, you can send out, you know, if you have questions for, for Brandy, I'm sure you can contact her directly mm -hmm. with her email, or you can send them to me, that's fine, and I can um, do what I can, maybe compile questions 
um, and send those as one to 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 Brandy. Um, and other than that, I thank you very much, Brandy. It was just such a, an interesting presentation. Um, I want to go out right now and work with my mom on some of her things, and <laughs> kept, um, particularly the economic checkup. I thought that was interesting. So yeah. um, I thank you, Brandy, and um, we'll I guess end the webinar here. Great. Thank you. Right, thank thanks. you. Bye-bye.